This episode of History Saver is brought to you by Addressing Gettysburg. Addressing Gettysburg is a podcast that shares great experiences, quality programs, awesome guests, and is a welcoming community for all who love Gettysburg. So join in with host Matt Callery and find out why Addressing Gettysburg is one of the top rated podcasts online today. You can find them on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, CastBox, Podbean, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, and on Instagram, Facebook, and of course, right here on YouTube. So check out Addressing Gettysburg today, where history is not boring. Thank you to Addressing Gettysburg for sponsoring this video. You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. guys so we're in the peach orchard talking about the 57th and uh had no idea that he was out here this morning but uh met up with my buddy jd from a history underground while we're here <laughs> jd hanging out exploring a peach orchard as well and uh well you guys need to go check out his channel as always the history underground best history channel that you could possibly watch uh, no, no, so. that's that's not true but thanks <laughs> <laughs> well JD's got an amazing series, American Artifact, going with Eric Dorr. If you're out here in Gettysburg, go to the Gettysburg Museum of History. Come out here, explore the battlefield, and uh, we're having fun for the Gettysburg 160th. So, back to the video. We're here inside of the Peach Orchard, and on July the 2nd, 1863, this area saw one of the known blunders of the Civil War, as General Dan Sickles made his way into this peach orchard because he thought this was a better position. Was Sickles wrong or right for doing so? Well, he didn't have orders to do that, but I'm going to leave it for you to judge whether he was wrong or right. We're not going to really get into that in this video because if we did, we'll just spend an hour talking about it. But I do want to show you a feature of what I think Sickles was looking at here at the peach orchard. So if you look here, and I don't know how well you could tell this on camera, but this is what I think Sickles was actually looking at. This peach orchard in the area where we're standing actually is sitting on a higher piece of ground. A higher piece of ground means a better vantage point. During the American Civil War, you have something called line of sight, line of fire. So General Sickles thought in his mind I think that since this was a higher piece of ground, it was better ground than what he was on behind us. So he orders his men to move forward. He creates a salient right here in this position. They write about this peach orchard. They tell about, one of the men of the 57 tells about being here, tells what time they got here to this peach orchard and what he experienced while in combat just to our right in front of the Sherfy farm. So this is the area where all of this went down on July the 2nd, 1863. We're going to go up and see Sickles' actual salient position 160 years ago to today. All right, so we are now in the salient position of General Sickles' division here on July the 2nd, 1863, 160 years ago today in the Sheffrey Peach Orchard. Now, the peach orchard you see behind me was beautiful. Gettysburg was known for their orchards, and the Sheffrey Farm was no exception. He was really known for his peaches. He had some of the most delicious peaches that was produced here in Gettysburg. On July the 2nd, 1863, as the Confederates began massing in the ridgeline you see in front of this position, this orchard would turn into a deadly mess along here at the Emmitsburg Road, which you see right to my right. 
The Emmitsburg Road was the line for Sickles' division. General Sickles ordered his men here and they created a salient just in front of us. Now, that salient did some horrible things for the Union troops that were here. It exposed them to fire on two flanks. So they were exposed to artillery fire on two of their flanks, which is not a good thing. If you're here in this salient, you're getting pounded by artillery. And eventually, this salient will become overrun and Sickles' men will start retreating backwards. And then the Confederates will eventually push in to the wheat field. So we're here on General Sickles' salient positions along the Emmitsburg Road where he had this salient position here. And in front of us, you have the men of Woford's Brigade, the 16th, 18th, 24th Regiments of Corps and Phillips Legions of Georgia Infantry who are charging across this field. And here you had the 68th Regiment of Pennsylvania Volunteers, Scotch Legion. And they were in this position right here on the salient here. Colonel A.H. Tippett, commanding 1st Brigade, 1st Division, 3rd Army Corps, was here with his men, and 183 of those men fell on this field on July the 2nd and 3rd, 1863. Now also in this location, you have men of the 2nd New Hampshire Volunteer Infantry of the 3rd Brigade, 2nd Division, 3rd Corps that was holding this line. They engaged 24 officers, 330 enlisted men on July the 2nd, 1863. And in this position, they held as part of Sickles' command. Casualties, they received officers, seven killed, 14 wounded, enlisted men, and 18 killed, 119 wounded, missing a total of 35 men. So they had many men who went down here in this position as well. So in this position where we are now, along the very noisy Emmitsburg Road, hopefully you can hear me, was Battery G of Ames Artillery. And it was the first New York light artillery position. They engaged here with the Third Corps, 3 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. on this day, 160 years ago. And also on July the 3rd on Cemetery Ridge with the First Division, Second Corps. They had casualties of seven wounded. But they were here as all of this was happening on July the 2nd, supporting the infantrymen here as the Georgia men from Warford and the Mississippi men from Barksdale's brigade began charging across this Emmitsburg Road into these positions. Now, as you enter the Peach Orchard area here, you have several tablets commemorating the men who fought here. You got one to the 3rd Corps 1st Division of David B. Burney and J.H. Hobart Ward. You also have one of the 3rd Corps, Major General Daniel Sickles, Major General David B. Burney. You also have one of the 3rd Corps 2nd Division of Brigade General Andrew A. Humphreys Division. And then you also have your artillery of the 3rd Corps up under the command of George E. Randolph and Captain A. Judson Clark, who were helping defend this position. So over here in the distance, you can see the Sherfy farm and the Sherfy barn, who this peach orchard belonged to. Now at the time of the battle, this peach orchard was a lot bigger than what it is today. It actually extended across the road a little bit and over into the area beyond here. And after the battle here of Gettysburg, the peach orchard was eventually restored. The peaches here, if you go to the website of the National Park Service, says they're for or uh, ornamental purposes. They don't produce fruit. But I guess you could go out there and pick peaches. But uh, they're, they're ripening at the end of this month, which is uh, a coincidence. So also right here you have the Pennsylvania Light Artillery of Hampton's Battery that is helping defend this peach orchard on June the 3rd, 1863, 
to March the 25th, 1864, batteries F and C of this company served as a consolidated battery. On July the 2nd, the day of this battle, they occupied this position from about 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. And on July the 3rd, they were the left center on Cemetery Ridge. On the left of the 1st Volunteer Brigade, Reserve Artillery, which is marked by a tablet. 24 men from Battery F were detailed to Battery H, 1st Ohio Artillery, posted in a cemetery during the battle. And you can come here today and see his position here in the Peach Orchard. All right, so now we've made our way to the Trossel Farm from the Peach Orchard. And the reason why we're here at the Trossel Farm is that there is a direct association with this farm and General Sickles and also the 57th Pennsylvania Veteran Volunteers. Strauss wrote in his accounts that when they got to Gettysburg on July the 1st, 1863, that evening, they went into camp here at the farm that you see directly behind me now during the battle of the peach orchard as they're falling back this is where general sickles was at now sickles unfortunately didn't fare out so well in the whole ordeal here as here in the location of the farm he's going to take an artillery shell that's going to basically break his leg injure his leg and he has to have it amputated Later, he donated his leg to a very cool medical museum that you can actually go back to JD on the History on the Grounds channel and view a video on that, if I'm not mistaken. And if I am, JD, uh, correct me in the comments. But uh, we're going to explore the trossel a little bit more, talk about sickles, talk about the 57, and give you a glimpse, just a quick glimpse, to this farm and a little bit of his history here associated with the Battle of Gettysburg on July the 2nd, 1863, 160 years to today. So let's get to it. So we're here at the Trossel Farm, and of course, with any historical site, you've got interpretive plaques that, kill, that help you gain a little bit more knowledge about what you're looking at and the location. And here is no different. They have some great interpretive plaques around the Gettysburg battlefield and the National Park Service does a really tremendous job at upkeeping those. And here you can read about this farm and what happened here. And July 2nd, 6 p.m., they were ordered to hold at all hazard, and this bought time for Union troops to occupy Cemetery Ridge. The Union was falling back to Cemetery Ridge, and they needed time to get back to Cemetery Ridge. Captain John Bigelow's 9th Massachusetts Battery, who were first-timers on the battle line, they're new guys, they're seeing the elephant, placed their guns here in the Abraham Trussell farmyard. Big Lou knew his battery. He had six 12-pounder Napoleons manned by 110 men. And they were being sacrificed to buy time. Those guys were here taking the brunt of all of the Confederate attacks so that the rest of the men could be saved and could save time to fall back to Cemetery Ridge. Cannoneers stacked ammunition for rapid fire, which will allow them to discharge the guns at a more rapid rate as the Confederates advanced over the knoll that is just to our left. As you can see, the Peach Orchard is directly up ahead of us on the Emmitsburg Road. They advanced to our left. The Knight Massachusetts began discharging his guns at a very rapid rate. They were having the barrels of these guns, as we can say, hot. And the Southerners kept pushing forward, and they ended up capturing four guns of the Knight Massachusetts Battery. And then fighting went hand to hand and the knight defended their guns with hand spikes and rammers before finally retreating. So these guys were here on cannons and they started beating back the Confederates with anything they could grab. It didn't matter if it was a rock, a ramrod, um, 
a spike that was used to spike the gun in the ground. They were grabbing everything they could and doing everything they could to buy their men time to fall back to Cemetery Ridge. And the Confederates just kept pouring over the ridge line you see directly to our front coming from the Emmitsburg Road and Peach Orchard area. So this is uh, the scene of some vicious hand-to-hand -hand fighting here. And General Sickles himself is going to be wounded in this position. All right, so what we're looking at now is one of the many buildings around Gettysburg where you can see battle damage. We, shot, we saw the Sherfy farm earlier. You can see the bullet strikes on the side of the Sherfy farm as the Confederates advance on the position with men of the 57th upstairs firing on the Confederate positions. And here at the Sherfy farm, you can see a cannonball strike in the top of the structure here. But that's not all that was here. There was a really famous original photograph taken here by some photographers that come into the field. We covered them on some earlier videos. If, the vid if those videos have already run, if they hadn't, they will be on the channel. But they come here to the Chaucer Farm, took some pictures, and some of the most famous photographs of the battlefield at Gettysburg was taken here on the Trossel Farm, which we'll try to give you a good angle of that photo in just a few minutes. But you can see the ground that is in front of us littered with many dead horses and artillery wagons and ram rides, all kinds of stuff laying across the ground. That was remnants of the fighting that took place here, including the night's hand-to-hand -hand combat that they experienced in this location as well. So on July 2nd, 1863, General Sickles is going to be wounded right here around this approximate location. He's going to be hit in the leg by an artillery strike. His leg's going to be broken and he's going to have it amputated. And Daniel Sickles leaves this spot in this battle, not only with ridicule for disobeying orders, but also without a leg. And this is where it happened. So we're talking about the guns of the 9th Massachusetts Battery. This is marking their positions here at the Trossel Farm. And their guns fell into enemy hands here in this position. They went in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the enemy in fierce fighting. 6 p.m. July 2nd, 1863. So somewhere from around this area, not exactly this area, but somewhere close to it, you have an original famous photograph taken of the Trossel Farm showing dead horses laying amidst these rocks. And this is uh, where in that area of where that photograph was actually taken. And right here to our right, we also have the Trossel House, the house connected with the Trossel Farm. So, this area saw not only General Sickles' headquarters, General Sickles being wounded, but also the fierce fighting of the ninth right here in this backyard. So if you ever hear, just keep in mind of the events that transpired here on July the 2nd and come by and pay your respects to the ninth Massachusetts Battery. So this is the Trussell Farm here in Gettysburg. And if you have never been to Gettysburg, Make sure when you do come to Gettysburg, you stop by and see where General Daniel Sickles lost his leg and where a lot of famous photographs were taken during the battle. So until next time, guys, keep preserving history. Stay safe. We will see you on the next episode from here at Gettysburg 160. Forgot to tell you guys, too, while you're at it, don't forget to visit the History Underground here on YouTube. Give JD a like, share and subscribe also project past vlogging through history great channels to watch my favorite channels to watch and great friends to the channel 
So make sure you go support them, give them some love and support. And yeah, that's, that's it for now. We'll see you soon. Hit that subscribe button.